Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. We got a lot of things to go over. So let's just jump into it. So just like the title and thumbnail suggests, we're taking a look at potentially a pivot with the US government. And this just came out yesterday. This was from the office of President Joseph Biden from the United States. And what we're talking about here is the act that is being uh, voted on. Actually, it was just voted on. And I'll tell you the, uh, the, the response of if it passed or not in just a second. This is for the FIT21 Act. And what this is essentially doing is going to allow the CFTC to overlook and to oversee crypto and digital assets instead of, say, the SEC and some other different provisions that could really help us out and actually move forward. And it was interesting because the last piece of legislation that came through for crypto and digital assets, I think it was 109, uh, the office of the President of the United States said, look, if this gets through uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate, essentially Congress, I will veto it. On this one, it's a little bit different, but I want you to pay attention to the language about what is being said. Because some people look at this and go, this is fantastic. They're pivoting. I look at this and go, I don't think this is really what it is. I'm going to let you be the judge. Here's what we got. This is a statement of administration policy, again, from Joe Biden. Uh, the administration opposes the pass passage of H.R. 4763. Let me say that again. The administration opposes the passage of 4763, which is 521, which would affect the regulatory structure for digital assets in the U.S. That's the negative. Here's the positive. The administration is eager to work with Congress. Let me say that again. Administration is eager to work with Congress, House Representatives and Senate, to ensure a comprehensive and balanced regulatory framework for digital assets, building on existing authorities, SEC, which will promote the responsible development of digital assets and payment innovation in the United States, global financial system, blah, 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 whatever. So again, you can take a look at this and go, this is awesome. They're pivoting. They didn't outright say it's going to be a veto. They said they want to work with everything. But I look at this and I'm like, yeah, maybe this is just posturing because things haven't been going so smooth for the administration. And look, when you're in position of power, you want to contain or retain that power. And to do that, sometimes you have to go and just know which way the winds are blowing. And we can see that with crypto digital assets. And of course, I know people hate when I say this word, Trump. But when he came through and started to support crypto and digital assets, all of a sudden they're like, hmm, it's not a bad idea. Seems like people are more positive. What happened to Senator Elizabeth Warren? Doesn't seem like it's working out for us so much. Anyhow, that's what we have for that. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. So this just passed. But you have to understand that in the U.S., if you're not from the U.S., it's okay. It's not as good as it used to be. It, it was awesome when I was growing up. Now it's, I don't even recognize it almost. But for the United States, the House, and let me make this crystal clear. I still love the United States. I still love this place. Uh, the House just passed Bill, the 21 bill. And if you notice on here, you'll notice uh, who voted for it and who voted against it. The yeas for the Republicans were 204. And the NV, which is non-votes, was 13. Democrats, the nays, were 203. And the non-votes were 10. All I needed was two of these people to side on the Democratic side, and it wouldn't have passed. Just letting you know, this passed slimmest of margins. And that's fantastic. I like to see that. And of course, if you're ever wondering, like, well, which side really wants to do this? This is from the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services, headed up by Representative Maxine Waters. And she says the not fit for Purpose Act, or Fit 21, legislation would create a massive loophole that would allow fraud to pro proliferate and result in a devastating losses for crypto consumers, investors trying to save for retirement, college, and other goals. Let me just tell you, it hasn't been working out too well for you guys as far as regulation. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, as far as consumer protection, you did a horrible job so far. And it says our consumers deserve better, no on Fit 21, and they almost got it. And I have to appreciate and applaud the people that come into the comment section and go, you're not telling the whole truth. This is gaslighting. Stronger, more clear crypto regulation would allow legitimate crypto businesses to flourish and for the USA to become the de facto leader in crypto innovation. Austin Campbell, this is a lie. I have asked multiple securities lawyers about exactly this point. None of them believe this to be true. If you disagree with the supermajority of the legal profession, show your work. And Digits Capital 
appropriately states, the only one who loses here is you at the next election. That's a pretty good rub. So, so, so good job on those. Uh, and again, this is where we're at. And that's just the facts. And lastly, before we move on, a uh, gentleman named name of Meta Lawman, he says yes on Fit 21. And this, uh, he's one of the uh, legal experts over Vanderbilt Law. Pretty good, uh, pretty uh, well-versed in Web3. He says, look, a yes vote equals regulatory clarity, consumer protection, pro-innovation, pro-US competitiveness, right side of history. The no vote equals more regulatory chaos, arbitrary and capricious decisions, anti-consumer, anti-innovation, technophobia, gerontocracy, the wrong side of history. So congratulations, we just got it through at the slimmest of margins. And that's where we're at. So we'll see what happens if uh, the Office of the President of the United States really lives up to the word and says, well, yes, we'll work with you. We we'll, might change some things moving forward, but uh, we want to have this bill go forward. Anybody's guess. We'll see how it works out. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also, uh, FOMC minutes, uh, we're done. If you want to get up to date about what's going on, check out my man, Tom Crypto, or <laughs> excuse me, Tom Crypto, Tom Crown. He's doing a live stream, uh, I think right now, right after this, about the FOMC meetings. But if you just want to get the highlights, this is from Walter Bloomberg, Global Markets News, Economic Data, Geopolitical Events. The FOMC minutes were released over the last meeting that they had. And here's what it is. And I don't, don't think this is very shocking to anybody. Uh, various Fed officials mentioned raising rates if inflation warrants it. That the FO, FOMC minutes stated this, the Fed officials note disappointing inflation, readings in the first quarter. Officials discuss holding rates study for longer if inflation doesn't fall and so far it really hasn't. So again, higher for longer, shocker. And that's their job. So let them do their job, sounds great. And that concludes that piece. Now, just as the title talked about, profits. So I asked this question this morning, have you taken any profits in the last month? And before we get into this, as a reminder, I can't give you financial advice. I don't know your situation. I don't know your bills. I don't know how much you make. I don't know your life goals. I don't know your financial goals. So the things I'm gonna talk about are for me. For you, vastly different. And me, you, and say, I don't know, somebody like Michael Saylor, vastly different in our approaches of what we're gonna do. I am not a billionaire. Maybe you are, and this is not for you. This is just the things that I'm doing. So let's dive in. So look, I asked the question, have you taken any profits? I was surprised actually that almost 30%, a third of you, almost, eh, really a fourth of you said, yes, you had. I didn't expect that. That's only, that's only 800 votes, so not a very, very big sample size. No, I did expect this, 58, 60%. I honestly thought that it'd be like 95%, no one took any profits. And the last one was, I'll never take profits because Luna and BitConnect and FTT are going to the moon. I couldn't fit it all in there. And, uh, you know, I just, of course, Jesus Martinez says he was dumping on me. And uh, that happens. A lot of people had, hey, I haven't taken anything or I'm just waiting. And some people like uh, crypto, <laughs> crypto curmudgeon says, my third cycle, I watched two portfolios lose 90% of its value in a flash. I learned my lesson, I'm dumping on everyone. And then SDL says I'm a DCAing. Mandel Bro says I'm, I'm allergic to taking profits. Poor for life says I'm only selling when I reach my target of hitting 1 million. And again, that's great, everybody's got a plan. Just stick to your plan, whatever it is. Here was my plan. My plan was, I took a look at CoinLedger. And this is a dummy account. This is a, actually isn't my account. I just want to remind everybody that over in CoinLedger, if you need to do your taxes, which we've already gone through that, uh, but they also have a, a great free portfolio tracker. It's very simple to use. You just set it up. You just put in your public wallet address. Very simple to do. And uh, it put, pulls all your data in. And again, this is just a dummy account they set me up with. But when I took a look at mine, what I was looking at, I was like, okay, what am I up at today? And the reason why I took some profits because I needed to pay for some other things in the, another business, just some things I wanted to do. It wasn't like I absolutely needed it, needed it, but I felt like this might be a good day. So I took a look at CoinLedger, said, okay, here's my returns, unrealized returns. 
Again, sample size for Bitcoin, 96,000. For Solana, 1,700. Uh, USDC, that didn't make, that's just, that's a stable. No one cares about that. UBT, I don't know what that is. Link, 153. And what I want to do is go, okay. I looked at the greens and go, okay. On this situation, I'd say, okay, Solana, right? I just click on Solana and go, okay, I'm up 1,700. Maybe I take 250 off the table just to see what happens and actually pay for the things I need to pay for. So that's what I did. I did it on, I'll get in the cryptos of which ones I actually sold. So everybody knows if you really want to. But some people will say, well, Rob, I don't, I don't want to deal with the taxes. Capital gains, bro, capital gains. Like you're fine because you live in Puerto Rico. It's a good point. <laughs> so what I did, you can always just click on here and under calculated balance, you can say, okay, I don't know where you're at. Again, this is why I can't give financial advice. But if we're talking about taxes, there's a big difference between short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains. But here in the States, after a year, you're going to pay long-term capital gains. It's around 20, 21%, somewhere around there. Uh, short-term capital gains are less than a year, and it's all by your tax bracket, right? So it could be up to 40-some percent, if you really think about it. And that's just how it is, which really sucks. That's why everybody's saying, hold for at least a year for long-term capital gains. And if you're in Germany, congratulations. From what I understand, you only have to hold it for a year, and then you pay zero capital gains. So if it was me, and I was set up with CoinLedger and the, the free portfolio tracker, and if you want to get into that, there's a link in the description, I'll just take a look here and go, okay, it's 2024, May something, May 23rd, something like that, May 22nd. What I want to do is see how much of this did I buy before May 21st, 2023. And all that stuff that I bought before then, that would be long-term capital gains. I can add it up. Actually, it looks like this. In this situation, I that's everything. So it only goes to 2022. Great. I'm paying long-term capital gains tax. And people say, well, you know, I don't want to pay long-term capital gains tax. I'm going to go forward. Look, 21% is 21%. I don't care if you go from, you have a profit of uh, $200 or $2 million. You're going to pay 20%, 21% in long-term capital gains if that's what how you have it set up for. Then, of course, people will say, well, I'm going to take loans against my crypto. Great. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, again, I can't give you financial advice, but crypto loans, I can see it happening in Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum, but some of this stuff, eh, I don't really get it. And as a reminder, my portfolio includes 80 some different cryptos. I know a little bit too much. I got a little carried away in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. Go shoot me. But for Bitcoin, it's over 75% still. Well, maybe 72, 73, I don't know. But the next ones are Ethereum Solana, Near Cardano, AVAX, Link, Stacks, Arbitrum, Immutable X, Injectable, Cosmos, Polygon, and 67 other ones that I couldn't even tell you what the heck they are. So I've just been accumulating. So what I sell? Well, as a reminder, I can't tell you what to do and I don't know your situation. But remember, I've been dollar cost averaging since 2022, you know? And uh, I didn't do a, a perfect job. At one point, I did a little what I called micro DCAing, overthinking things, stupid. That happens. So I've been dollar cost averaging and uh, I sold a little bit of Avalanche today. Remember, 2022 it wasn't a bad time. 13 bucks, somewhere around there. Would have been great to sell here, but I didn't. Came over here. I sold a little Solana. Again, not a bad time as I was picking up some things down here. I mean, I didn't do a great job, but whatever. Uh, this is my outlier, Decentraland. I just sold it because I got rid of it. I'm tired of seeing it in my wallet. I'm like, this thing's never going back. And maybe it does. But right now, I need it for something else. I sold a little Injective. Again, dollar cost averaging. Of course, of course I think I was buying. I, I remember buying in January. And I didn't, didn't sell all of it. Again, you just sell a little bit. If you've been dollar cost averaging for a couple years, you just sell a little bit. I sold a little Caspa, and I sold a little Nier. And Nier was my best one so far. I was buying, uh, it was a great one. I was buying down here, three bucks, two dollars, dollar seventy nine, whatever. Again, I can't tell you what to do. This is what I did. I took some profits, and I do it. Well, I do it because I needed it. I needed to pay off some other things for another business. But you don't have to do anything. Why would you listen to me? I'm not 
doing what you're doing, you don't need it. If you don't need it, why don't you just let it ride? Or maybe you think to yourself, maybe this particular project might not do so well at some point. Regardless, I'm just letting you guys know that, yes, I do dollar cost average, and yes, I do sell. And these are the things that I do. That's it. Anyhow, that's it for today. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. If you liked today's video, thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about it's time sensitive.